What's up guys, this is Mike, the Detroit Borg, with a walkthrough on how to upgrade the RAM inside your MacBook Pro. Now this process works for every current generation MacBook Pro configuration and size. In this case, I have the newest 13-inch MacBook Pro with 4 gigs of RAM standard. Now Apple charges $200 to upgrade from 4 gigs to 8 gigs, but I can do this myself for under $60 by purchasing the RAM from a third party and installing it myself. As I've always done, I purchased my 8GB upgrade kit through Crucial, which consists of two 4GB DDR3 modules. In order to access our RAM, we need to remove the back panel. To remove the panel, we'll need a triple zero Phillips screwdriver to remove the 10 screws. I also want to use a small cup to gather the very tiny screws so I don't lose them. Before we open the MacBook Pro, make sure it's powered down and not in standby mode. It's important to note that the screws come in two sizes, long and short. Three of the screws on the right side near the hinge are longer, while the rest are short. Removing them is pretty easy, but you have to be careful or you may slip and scratch your back panel with the screwdriver. With the screws removed, we can lift up the panel and expose the internal hardware. Quickly looking at the inside of the back plate, you can see the plastic vent grills fastened to the hinge side of the panel. Now this is our chance to scope out the interior of the MacBook Pro. Dominating the interior space is the optical drive in the upper left quadrant, the motherboard and fan in the upper right, the battery on the lower right, and the HDD or SSD in my case in the lower left. On the motherboard we'll find our existing RAM modules stacked on top of each other like we've seen in the Mac Mini. And just like in the Mac Mini, they are spring loaded and can be ejected by spreading the brackets apart and allowing them to pop up. Once removed, we can see our two SODIMM slots. To install our new modules, we need to position our chips in the right orientation so the notch on the slots matches the notch on the modules. Installing the first module is a little tricky. Just install the chips at the same angle you remove them at, working your way through the holding brackets. Now make sure your chips are seated properly and pushed down to latch them into place. Repeat for the upper module. Now before I reinstall the backplate, I want to make sure the RAM chips have been recognized by the computer. To do this, turn on the computer and go to the Apple logo in the upper left corner. Select About This Mac and you should see 8 gigs of memory. If you have any issues, the modules may not have been seated correctly or the chips are faulty. Now I can reinstall my backplate, making sure I'm installing the long and short screws in the correct locations. Now that we've confirmed a successful RAM installation, let's take a look at the performance benefits. First up is Geekbench, which will test overall system performance and give us a score, which we can use to compare to other systems. With 4 gigs, the MacBook Pro scored 6958, but with 8 gigs, it scored 7158. This is a marginal improvement, but an improvement nonetheless. Next up is the Cinebench score, which analyzes gaming performance. With 4 gigs, our OpenGL score was 11.91 frames per second, but with 8 gigs, our score improves to 12.66 frames per second. The CPU scores are marginally different. This certainly isn't a significant difference, but it's important to note that because the 13-inch MacBook Pro uses an integrated Intel graphics processor, adding more system RAM means the graphics processor can now use more RAM for gaming. So adding twice the RAM means the GPU can use 512 megs of RAM instead of just 384 megs of RAM. Now this doesn't dramatically improve gaming performance, but allows more games to run optimally if they require more RAM to render maps or objects. Adding more RAM is chiefly beneficial if you need to run memory intensive apps all at the same time, such as Final Cut Pro, ScreenFlow, After Effects, and Photoshop. And since the cost is marginal, adding more headroom is a worthwhile investment for every MacBook Pro user. So that'll do it for me guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.